In the middle of the desert of the United Arab Emirates, like an oasis, lies Dubai, one of the most modern cities in the world. It has many things that attract attention. Whether it's giant man-made islands that replicate the world map, a 0% tax rate, or leisure activities where you can fly jetpacks, it's all about fun, wealth, and carefree living. But after decades of prosperity, it is becoming increasingly apparent that Dubai faces almost insurmountable problems. In this video, we want to show you why the city could soon run out of money, what devastating consequences this scenario would have for even Dubai's wealthiest residents, and why the megacity has only a few years ahead of it to save itself from disaster. The video will be revealing and fascinating, so stay tuned here at WiseFool. Before we get into the details, however, let's take a look at some key facts about Dubai. The desert city is currently home to 3 million people and is the largest city in the United Arab Emirates. This relatively small country is currently the 29th largest economy in the world and has a gross domestic product of around $507 billion. For a long time, this money came mainly from the export of crude oil, but over time, other economic sectors have been added. The metropolis now attracts over 16 million tourists annually thanks to many major projects, including the world's tallest building, the largest airport on the planet, and the most luxurious hotels and restaurants. Numerous celebrities and millionaires now also call Dubai home, and compared to other Gulf states, the UAE is no longer so dependent on oil, which is estimated to run out in a few decades at the latest. In fact, oil sales currently account for only 5% of Dubai's total gross domestic product. Nevertheless, at present, it appears that Dubai could collapse completely in the foreseeable future. And there are several reasons for this. One of them is relatively obvious, the climate. In summer, temperatures in Dubai can exceed 45 degrees in the shade. The city is currently trying to deal with this with giant air conditioning systems. These air conditioning systems are even used to cool an indoor ski resort in the middle of the desert in sub-zero temperatures. But no matter how much artificial cooling is used, there is one climate change phenomenon that cannot be stopped, desertification. Desertification means that areas of land that are already dry become deserted due to lack of rain and high temperatures. For Dubai, it means that many areas on the outskirts of the city are becoming arid and can no longer be used for agriculture or to feed the population. As a result, the UAE is already almost entirely dependent on food imports from abroad, as it simply does not have the resources to grow many types of fruits and vegetables itself. In addition, the supply of drinking water in Dubai is also getting worse and worse. On the one hand, rainfall is becoming less and less due to desertification, and on the other hand, more and more zones for the construction of water treatment plants are disappearing, as these cannot work economically in a desert. In 2002, the Emirates still had 75,000 hectares of agricultural land. In 2020, not even 20 years later, this area has already been reduced to just 48,000 hectares due to desertification. Therefore, it can already be observed that Dubai is consuming its natural resources faster than it can replenish them. And in fact, no other city in the world has a worse ecological footprint, which in turn means that Dubai will probably have to import an extremely large amount of food and resources from abroad in the future. And although Dubai is extremely wealthy, this threatens to become a very serious economic problem, but we'll get to that in a moment. Before that, let's look at another reason why Dubai could lose its status as a wealthy metropolis, politics. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has ruled Dubai as emir since 2006. He is known for his power in his emirate and is careful to immediately suppress any opposing views. He did not hesitate to imprison his own daughter a few years ago. In 2020, he was even convicted of kidnapping and torture by a London court. If he continues to rule in this undemocratic manner, it could mean numerous sanctions from Western countries in the long run, which would further burden Dubai's future sustainability. Moreover, Dubai's policy is exclusively pro-rich. The fact that you have to pay zero income tax there means that as a worker, you can keep all your money, but things like health insurance, cheap local transport, and bank deposit protection are non existent. So if you can't afford expensive doctors or a good car, you risk falling into poverty in Dubai, which brings us to the next big threat to Dubai. All in all, Dubai is not all glitz and glamour. Much of the population does not live in the glitzy city center, but in isolated, rundown suburbs. Overall, 85% of Dubai's population is made up of immigrants. Most of them work as underpaid laborers in large construction sites and live in very poor sanitary conditions and bungalows on the outskirts of the city. 
city. According to numerous sources, they work almost around the clock earning very little in labor needed for the expensive life in Dubai. In fact, conditions are so bad that the suicide rate in Dubai is one of the highest in the world. Already since 2005, it is believed that over 390 workers have ended their lives because they could no longer cope with the poor working conditions. Today, almost 20 years later, this number is estimated to have more than doubled. This causes two problems for Dubai. Firstly, international criticism is becoming increasingly intense. Secondly, productivity is declining as more and more workers can no longer cope with the miserable conditions. This problem is being exploited by Dubai's competitors, but more on that in a moment. But before that, we want to address a key problem that we already touched on at the beginning, the economic situation in Dubai. Although the government started to reduce its dependence on oil quite early on, other sectors are in very bad shape, especially the extremely important real estate sector. In recent years, Dubai has built one skyscraper after another. This was made possible because investors were able to borrow a lot of money due to low global interest rates and hoped that they would soon be selling expensive apartments and offices to clients from all over the world. However, since central banks started introducing high base rates two years ago, fewer and fewer potential buyers are taking loans, meaning thousands of properties in Dubai are now empty. Tihi State itself is often behind these buildings and as a result is now sitting on a mountain of debt that cannot be repaid. But how can Dubai ensure that the property sector in particular picks up speed again and that big companies or rich people are attracted to the city in the long term? On the one hand, the government could print new money to repay the loans, but that would also mean rising inflation. On the other hand, it could also do something that for many Dubai residents has long been unthinkable and would likely have extremely disastrous consequences. It could introduce an income tax rate. In order to provide the state with fresh money, the government could in effect require levies on people's income in order to pay off its own debt. However, this would probably mean that the wealthiest residents in particular would leave the city with their wealth as many of them have moved there only because of the 0% tax policy. This in turn would mean that there would be less investment in the city and the emirate would again become more dependent on oil. Either way, Dubai's economic situation today looks disastrous. Either the government needs to increase inflation by printing new money or scare its wealthy residents by introducing taxes. Neither is exactly helpful if Dubai wants to continue to prosper. With all these problems, Dubai has a particular challenge to prevail against the huge competition from the region. Countries like Saudi Arabia and Bahrain have also realized that they need to move away from oil in order to remain prosperous in the long run. As a result, almost all Gulf states have planned projects that dwarf even Dubai's records. For example, the world's tallest tower and a 170 kilometer long city are to be built in Saudi Arabia. All this to attract foreign investments so that they can reduce their dependence on oil. Above all, this requires cheap labor for the construction sites that will carry out the projects. In other words, the very workers on whom Dubai's prosperity has hitherto depended. Many believe that there is currently not enough labor to meet the demand in all the Gulf states due to poor conditions. Therefore, Dubai could soon run out of workers for its projects as they would rather go to Bahrain or Saudi Arabia. And there is something else that affects Dubai, like the other Gulf states, time. Experts have predicted that global demand for oil will fall below available supply by 2030 at the latest, as more and more people turn to renewable energy sources. For these countries, this means that they will probably soon no longer be able to rely solely on their oil and will only be able to sell it at fairly low prices. It is therefore not surprising that all the Gulf states are advertising their incredibly ambitious projects under the slogan, Vision 2030. The numerous projects will have to be completed by then, otherwise there will be almost no oil money to invest in other industries. Thus, Dubai's current business model of attracting foreign wealth through mega projects will find itself on very shaky ground. If other countries manage to offer a zero tax rate and even more attractive conditions, it is very likely that Dubai will lose much of its population and its wealth. A now deceased sheikh of Dubai once said, My grandfather used to ride a camel. I drive a Mercedes. My grandson will drive a Land Rover. But my great-grandson will ride a camel again. What do you think of this phrase? And do you also think that Dubai is on the verge of collapse? Tell us what you think in the comments. See you next time, here at Wise Fool.